Okay, hi guys, my name's Sophia. My name's Simone. And my name is Elaine. And our topic for CPSG was the impacts of global change and the spread of dengue fever. So we chose to break this topic down into three parts to give the full scope of dengue from its start all the way to now. So the first part we focused on was the spread and origin of dengue and just overall specifics of the virus. So dengue, also known as breakbone fever, is a very old and widespread disease that can be hard to pinpoint because the symptoms can range from none to very mild um, to even severe in some rare cases. And a few of these symptoms can include high fever, intense headaches, eye pain, vomiting, and even nausea. And as a result of the varying symptom range, dengue is often underreported or even mistaken with other similar diseases such as Zika or malaria. And there are four different stereotypes of dengue, which are just dengue one, dengue two, dengue three, and dengue four. And just like most similar viruses, dengue can only replicate in a host organism. And it's part of the Flaviviridae family, along with many other viruses that spread from anthropods. In regards to its origin, as I said before, it is very hard to pinpoint because there have been so many dengue fever adjacent cases throughout history and the virus disperses farther and farther every year. So just to give you a better idea of how vast the spread is, as you can see beside me, there are two maps from the CDC that show the dengue cases in the US in 2010 and 2020. And just that 10 year span, you can already see a very prominent increase in cases in some of the states, such as California, Texas, and Florida. So this can give you a better idea of why it can be so difficult to find the origin of this type of virus. Um, and now I'm, I'm sure you're wondering how it was able to spread so far, and that was a result of mosquitoes. So dengue fever is a vector-borne disease, meaning that it's carried by a living organism and transmitted to other living organisms. Um, and the carrier of dengue is the Aedes aegypti mosquito type. So as climate change increases and the climates of previously cooler regions become warmer and more similar to tropical and subtropical regions, these mosquitoes are able to, you know, travel to these new places and survive for longer, thus spreading the disease more. So our second main point is the global spread of dengue, um, its geographical regions and the climax of its prevalence. So here's a map of the spatial distribution of dengue. Um, the shaded areas depict the regions that it spread and they had a higher number of cases. And this shows around the years of 1943 to 2013, so mid 1900s to early 2000s. Um, and you can see it starts out with almost little to no cases. There's a little bit at the bottom of India, but this slowly progresses to Central America and South America, along with parts of Eastern and South Asia, um, parts of Africa and Australia. But we see later on it picks up in specific areas in the late 1900s and mainly um, probably the most obvious one would be in South America and places like Brazil, which is also what we see in um, from the 2000s to the 2013 time. Um, and this is also because of the warmer temperatures like Sophia was talking about earlier um, when there are mosquitoes or these warmer temperatures mean more mosquitoes and just the climate is what um, allows for higher transmission um, between communities. And that's pretty much shown in the map and also throughout um, Eastern countries in Asia near the equator. So we're gonna break it down into most of the bigger continents that saw dengue fever spreads. Um, in the Americas, they, it started in the late 1700s, but actual scientific tracking and keeping record of places um, and numbers started in the 1980s. Um, but most of the early cases were reported um, 
in the late 1900s, kind of after it started tra um, being tracked along with the early 2000s. And this wasn't particularly in North America, rather Central and South America, as you saw on the map. Um, in Asia, Southeast Asia, like I showed, had a lot of um, cases. And in this area in particular, what we found interesting was that they had the highest death rate in children, especially in the 1970s, mainly because they didn't have proper medications and um, medical tools needed to assist them. Um, and the places like Philippines saw a drastic increase in the late 1990s. In Europe and Africa, there were German explorers who started carrying it in 1700s. And since they were explorers, they eventually took it to other parts of the world. Um, and in Africa, some of the countries saw the highest cases between the 1960s and the early 2000s, and some of the more popular areas were um, closer to the equator, where it spread the most. Okay, our next main point was about the present spread of dengue, um, and it just contains like information about its prevention and its treatment. So the current spread of dengue is not... Um, as you can see, it is spread from Southern and Central America to North America and spread to most of Australia. But the countries that were experiencing issues with dengue fever in East Asia and in Africa seem to at least have less cases or just have no data available. As Sophia was saying, it's hard to um, pinpoint if you're, the virus you're experiencing is dengue because it's similar to a lot of other um, sicknesses. Okay, so how do we prevent contracting dengue fever? Stay away from mosquitoes. It's important to, um, since it's a virus that is contracted from a mosquito bite and, um, yeah, it's contracted from a mosquito bite, it's important to just use your regular, like, bug prevention um, methods, such as using bug spray, staying away from warmer climates, um, and like staying away from still water. So treatments for dengue fever, it can be fatal. There's a big range of the severity of dengue fever once one contracts it, um, kind of like COVID, but there is no specific treatment or special pill that will just erase it. There is a vaccine though that you can get and you have to get in doses, much like the COVID vaccination. You can also use over-the-counter pain medication to help with some of the symptoms listed here, but it will go away mostly on its own. So in summary, it's important to pay attention to dengue fever spread because as the climate warms up, it becomes more prominent in areas that weren't necessarily warm before and can affect more, more of the population. And yeah, thank you. And here are our sources.